Hey, Apollo Baptist Church. This is Pastor Gary on the Apollo Underground vlog, uh, bringing to you another screen recording um, of another very large sentence from the Apostle Paul. Pastor Jim talked about it um, in summary uh, yeah, uh, on Monday for his vlog. And I really encourage you. He gives you a really great overall look at chapter three. I'm going to center in on these uh, verses right here. So verses 14 through 19. Again, in our Bible reading plan, we're reading through Ephesians. And so uh, I wanted to center in on Ephesians 3, 14 through 19 because they really gave me a great um, uh, just way to pray for you today. And I, I, I loved the words that God gave me. And I thought you could use these words too for the people that God has called you to pray for. Um, well, so right away, uh, he says this important line here, for this reason, I bow my knees before the Father. So he's saying right away, this is the reason I'm praying. This is the reason I'm praying. So everything after that, all right here, this all comes back to that line right there. <clears throat> it's all coming back to, to God saying, uh, this is the reason I bow. I, I this, is, this is the reason Paul is saying. This is the reason I pray for you. This is the reason that I I want to talk to God about you because and so everything um, here in this huge sentence goes on forever. And sometimes because they're so big, it's kind of hard to unpack. Um, he is saying that uh, I, I'm praying this about. Um, about my people, about the people that you have given me. So um, the the great thing about this, you know, right away, I love this line, you know, because it's almost like Paul gets to certain things. He's like, oh, I got to talk about that. So he gets to father and he says, you know, we, I, I bow my knees before the father. Oh, by the way, this is from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. That's a great line. It doesn't have anything to do with um, what he's praying for, but he's just trying, trying to mention, look, how can we not pray to this God? How can we not pray to him? Every family in heaven and on earth is named by him. Like we, we don't even have to know the name of the person we're praying for. God knows who we're talking about. So that's a great <clears throat> phrase right there as well. But um, so he breaks it down into all the, it's basically a series of cause and effect relationships. Okay. So number one, I'm going to, Let's see. I'll, I'll do. I'll do green. Okay. Number one, right here, <clears throat> is um, according to the riches of his glory, he might grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. So maybe, maybe just because because it right now he's he's right away uh, he's talking about um, according to the riches of his glory. He doesn't get to what he's praying until down here. He says, "I want you to be strengthened." Uh, with power through his spirit in your inner being. Okay, so number one, I want you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. So I want you to be filled with the spirit so that, and here's number two, Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, right? Um, so, I mean, the spirit exalts Jesus. That's who the Holy, that's what the Holy Spirit does. He, he comes into your heart and he exalts Christ in your heart. And so when, when you have the spirit of God in your inner being, Christ is going to dwell in your heart through faith. And then number three, he says that you, right? So once Christ dwells in your heart, that you being rooted and grounded in love, right? So you're, you're grounded in love from this, from, from Christ being in your heart. Um, and then, uh, because I mean, when Christ is in your heart, I mean, you, you're, gr you're grounded in his love. I want you to be, you're going to, Oh, I, um, I repeated the, I repeated that same thing. Uh, number four, so that you may have strength to comprehend, or I want you to understand with all the saints, what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that it surpasses knowledge. So that's all wrapped up in number four, okay? All of this, breadth, length, height, it's all coming back to number four. Um, he, I want you to know the love of Christ, right? I want you to know it. I want you to know the love of Christ. All that is coming back to number four. Um, because when you're grounded in his love, you know it, right? You know its breadth, its length, its height, its depth. I want you to know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge. And then the final thing, number five, um, <clears throat> is that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So this is, if you will, 
sort of like a five-step cause and effect prayer for their discipleship process, right? So number one, um, he says, I want you uh, I want you to be strengthened and empowered by his spirit. So we can say strengthened by the Holy Spirit, right? I'll just say that. Um, and then uh, number two, what that's going to do, right, is I'll just put an arrow here because this is a cause and effect kind of thing. Um, when you're strengthened by the Holy Spirit, you are, uh, number two, uh, Christ dwells in you, right? Christ dwells in uh, your heart. And then number three, um, because of that, you're going to be rooted, rooted in his love. And then because of that, again, this is all cause effect. This leads to this, and this leads to this. Because you're rooted in his love, you, I'm just going to say, know his love. Obviously, he breaks it down. Uh, uh, he breaks it down in the height, the depth, the breadth. But it's all coming. I want you to know his love, which is ironic, kind of, because he says it's it surpasses knowledge, is what he says here. It surpasses knowledge, but you're still going to, I want you to know the breadth, the length, the height, the depth. Uh, but even though it surpasses knowledge, you're going to know it um, to the best of your humanly ability. But it all comes down to this. I want you to be filled with the fullness of Christ. Church family, this is my prayer for you this morning. Uh, praying that you're filled with the fullness of God. Um, here, I'll just say God so it's so it's a, so you don't get confused. It's exactly, I mean God, Christ, the same thing. But um, but uh, but that's what the text says. It says God, and I don't want you, I don't want to get confused. So, uh, but I want you to be filled with the fullness of God. This is the purpose of discipleship, right? Because just because you know when you become a Christian. You know, you <laughs> you may not know how to be strengthened in the power of His Spirit, right? You may not know how to be uh, how how is is Christ dwell in your heart? You, I mean, He is, but you may not know how, about how all that works, right? And there's a daily reality of that too, beyond just an eternal one. There's a daily being filled with Christ, and then when you're filled with Christ, you you're rooted and grounded in His love, right? And then you understand, you you know, with all the saints. Then you know the love of, of Christ, and then you are filled with the fullness of God. That's what you want. I want to be filled with the fullness of God. I know I have it. I know I have a, a walk with Christ, but I, I, I want to be filled with it. I want to be filled day by day, growing stronger and stronger in knowing God's love for me and to be filled with the fullness of God. So let's pray really quick here. God, I pray for the people that you've given me here at Apollo Baptist Church. God, I pray that they would be empowered, strengthened through your spirit, that that empowerment would cause Christ to dwell in their hearts through faith, that Christ dwelling in their hearts would ground them in love, that being grounded in Christ's love would help them know what is the breadth and length and height and depth of the love of Christ for them, and that that deep knowledge of an unsurpassing love uh, would cause them to be filled with all the fullness of God. I pray this in Jesus' name.